Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to do kind of an intermediate no-knead bread. Um, this is sort of a stepping stone method between the totally hands-off overnight no-knead bread that we did a little while ago on the channel. And it's a little bit more hands-on, it's going to come together faster, so it's, uh, it's something that you start in the morning and by supper time you can have a loaf of bread. And so it's a little bit more hands-on, you're not kneading, but you are going to be folding the bread a little more often. So I need 500 grams of all-purpose flour. Now this loaf is a little more finicky, that's why I am weighing everything. And unlike the other recipe, uh, there we go, 500. Unlike the re other recipe that we did where I wasn't worried about water temperature at all, in this instance I am a little more worried about water temperature. Um, because we're doing it in a shorter time, you want to make sure that your water is hot enough. And in this case, I'm doing 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've got the flour in our jug and in goes the water and you just pour it all in all at once. And I'm going to take a wooden spoon and we just want to bring this together. And that's it. So we just want to bring it together into a ragged mass um, just to make sure that the flour is all dampened. Now I'm going to allow this to do an auto lees rest. And an auto lees rest just means that you're allowing the water to start the enzymatic action in the flour to convert the flour starches into simple sugars that the yeast can eat. So I'm going to put a lid on this and I'm going to let it go for about 20 to 30 minutes. So this basic method, technique, uh, recipe can be found in a lot of baking books or bread baking books and bread textbooks. But probably the best example of this recipe is found in a book called Flour, Water, Salt, Yeast. Um, if you're really interested in pursuing bread baking and trying to grow as a bread baker, I highly recommend that book. And the cookbook right beside it on our shelf is The Bread Baker's Apprentice, and that is a fantastic book as well. And it's a little bit more advanced in its baking technique, but if you really want to grow as a bread baker, I would check those out. Okay, that's the end of the auto lees, and you can see not much has really changed in the bottom of this bucket. But I assure you it has. Inside, the dough has already made some significant changes. So at this point we're going to add in the salt, and I'm using a really fine flake sea salt and the yeast. And I'm just going to pour both of those on top. Now I'm using fine flake sea salt and I'm using this instant yeast because the grain size is really tiny and it's going to mix in better. And the next step is just to mix them both in. Now, you can wet your hand. Um, I should have wet my hand already. Let's see. Just to keep it from sticking a little bit. In other um, bread videos on the channel and the pizza videos, I do a modified Ottilie's rest. In those cases, I usually add the salt and the the yeast in and then let it rest in a modified Ottilie's. Um, and I do that because I've always found that the yeast and the salt don't dissolve in very well if you, if you add them at this point. Um, but so many books tell me to do it this way, I'm just going to give it a try and see what happens. So the whole idea is for the next five minutes we're just going to mix this all together and try to get it try to get the salt and the yeast dissolved and mixed into the dough. And it really is just a matter of, you know, just grab it with your hand and squeeze it. Um, kind of like you're just squeezing it out through your fingers. And you can be quite aggressive with it, and it will stick to your hand, don't worry about that. You just want to make sure that everything is mixed together and dissolved. So this dough has come together nicely. I don't see any yeast particles that haven't dissolved into the dough. And it's almost a batter at this point. It is very sticky. It is going to stick to your hand. It's going to be okay. So I'm going to leave this now for about another 20 minutes. I'm going to cover it and then we're going to come back and do a fold. And I did call this a no knead bread, um, but you're still going to, you're still really going to be mixing it, folding it. Uh, in the place of kneading it, it's going to be okay. It's not that difficult. So I'll see you back here in 20 minutes for the first fold. Now it's time for the first fold, which is exactly what it sounds like. So I've got a wet hand 
and you just grab and you pull it over and you fold it. You give it a little turn, grab some, and fold it over. And so you're just grabbing from the bottom, folding it over the top. And you just go around the bucket and you do this. And you can see, even at the end of the first fold, how nice and smooth this dough starts to become. So once we get around to the edge, I'm going to put the lid back on and I'm going to let it go for another 20 minutes and we'll do one more fold. Okay, it's time for the second fold. I'm just going to wet my hand and just exactly the same as we did the first time, stick it under and pull it over. Give it a bit of a twist, stick it under, pull it over. And just repeat this process as you go around. I'd say pull it over six, seven times, something like that. Um, and I always lose track of counting. Always lose track of counting. You can tell that the, the dough is getting really nice at this point. It's coming together. It's nice and elastic. It's looking really good. So once I've got this folded over, I'm going to put the cover back on, and I'm going to leave it here on the counter room temperature for three to four hours. We want this dough to triple in volume over that three to four hour period. Looking good. Okay. See you back here in a while. We are three hours in and I've got a pretty good rise on this. Now, the time is almost immaterial. It was three hours for me in a kitchen where the temperature was 35 degrees inside the kitchen today. And my dough temperature was about 88 degrees <clears throat> when I mixed it together. So those two factors mean I'm going to get a faster rise today. If, if this was in the middle of winter, my rise would have been much slower. I probably would have been closer to four or five hours. So I've put some flour down on this part of the bench, and I've got some on my hands. And we just want to ease this out of the bucket. Um, Unlike a lot of bread recipes that want you to punch it down, you want to try to get this out as delicately as possible. You don't want to deflate it too much. I mean, you're still going to deflate it, but just ease it out onto the flour. Okay, so now we're going to shape this dough. We need to shape it and then we're going to let it proof in one of these wicker baskets. And shaping it is really easy. You just want to get your fingers underneath and it shouldn't stick to the bench too much because the bench is floured and you pull it over. And then up under again, pull it over, drop it down. Essentially the same as the folding that we did in the bin. And pulling it over as far as you can is always best. Now at that point, I think we're pretty good. Now that we've got a good ball of dough, I want to lift it over here where there is no flour, gently, and we're going to turn it over. So now this is going to be eventually the bottom of our loaf of bread. And we want to create some tension on top. So. Hands have still got some flour on them so that the dough doesn't stick. And you just come underneath and you want the dough to grab onto your bench a little bit. And that tension is going to start to build the top. And so you just pull it back. And once we've pulled it back, I'm going to turn it and then do the same thing again. And so let's see, you just pull it back. That's probably not the greatest camera angle. Turn it one more time. And I am by no means great or even reasonably good at shaping. So do the best that you can. Try to get enough, as much tension as you can over the top. It's going to be fine. We're going to proof it in one of these proofing baskets. So these are made out of um, wicker and you flour them generously inside. Over time, they build up a really good coating inside that makes them pretty much non-stick. When you first buy them, you really have to make sure that you flour them well. And sometimes they come with a linen uh, liner, which helps keep them non-stick. 
Uh, I never use the linen. If you don't have one of these, you can take a bowl with a, with a tea towel um, and coat the tea towel in some flour, and that will make it non-stick. You'll end up at the same place. Now, there's a lot of debate about this next bit. I'm going to put it in seam side down, smooth side up. And what this means is that when it goes into the Dutch oven, it's going to go smooth side down, and that seam is going to be at the top, and it will naturally break open to allow the steam to escape. If you put it in into the basket smooth side down with the seam at the top, when you put it into the Dutch oven, the smooth side will be at the top again, and then you'll have to score it um, to let the steam escape. I'm not very good at, uh, at scoring it. So I'm gonna cover this with a towel and let it sit for an hour and prove. About 45 minutes has gone by and I think this bread has proved and proved enough. So it's looking pretty good. And the way to tell if it has proved is you take your finger and you poke it in. And if it springs back really slowly, it's good to go. If it springs back really quickly, really, really fast, cover it back up and let it go another five or 10 minutes. If it doesn't spring back at all, well, you've gone over, it's overproved. And I gotta tell you nine times out of 10, I still will bake it if it's overproved. Uh, there is a whole process to bring it back, but when you're starting out, I don't know that I would worry about it that much. So I've got a bit of flour on the bench. I've got a Dutch oven preheated to 475 degrees in the oven, and we wanna flip this out carefully. Um, it shouldn't stick to the proofing basket. Let's see how this works out. There we go, look at that, beautiful. And so you can see some of the creases and the cracks on the top and that's where it's gonna split open as the baking starts. Okay, get this out of the oven. This is extremely hot, 475 degrees. You sort of wanna get your fingers under it and you wanna get it into the pot without deflating it too much, without burning yourself. Um, it can be bit of a thing. There you go, back in. So I'm gonna cover this up. It's gonna go into the oven for half an hour, covered, and then I will uncover it and let it go for another half hour until the internal temperature reaches about 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty good, Glenn. Hey, Jules. Um, so an intermediate, hey, no friends. need bread. Intermediate, no need bread. Got it. Um, we probably need a longer bread knife. For the style gonna, of for bread? For the style of bread, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. We'll just squish it a little and it'll all work out. So there you go. Even slightly squished, I'm sure it is absolutely fabulous. Looks good. I, it it's got lots of holes. Lots, lots, lots of holes. Lots, lots of bubbles. <laughs> the structure is really good. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Yes, the structure is the really structure good. The structure is really good. And the structure on this is, is better than <clears throat> the full-on no-need, no overnight bread that we do. Now, it's still a rustic bread. It is very rustic. It is still... Um, you know, it's still chewy. On the, the, the crust is still chewy. The inside is nice and soft and fluffy. This is not Wonder White sandwich bread. This is an artisanal loaf. It's kind of amazing how just a little bit more work, mm -hmm. like the just folding it in, mm -hmm. which is what I believe you were doing, mm -hmm. it just improves Impro it. Improves the texture right? just a little bit. So if you've been making the overnight no-knead bread from our video a while back, great starting place, and it's probably the loaf of bread that we make most often. If you're willing to invest a little bit more active time into making the bread, I mean... It's technically shorter time. It, well, it is shorter. I mean, it's done in one day. Yes. But instead of five minutes of mixing and forgetting about it, we did five minutes of mixing and then came back for five minutes of mixing and then five minutes of mixing. It and actually then gives you it. a great reason for those of you who are still working at home, a great reason to get up for five minutes, do something, mm -hmm. and then go back to what it is you have to do at your kitchen table. <laughs> so if you've mastered the previous bread, give this one a try. And if you haven't baked bread before, this is still a really easy loaf. There's nothing too technical in this loaf. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.